Hello Paper Greenhouse Pals! Today we're going to go over how to make this baby blue eucalyptus stem. So this is a great filler for your bouquets um, and just an all-around interesting piece for foliage. Um, it is a lot of work but it has an incredible effect and it will take your arrangements to the next level. So I'm going to set this aside and we'll go over supplies. For supplies for this project, we're going to need our scissors, a 24 gauge wire, uh, some 30 gauge wires. I've got four here. You may need more or less depending on how many leaves you make. Um, some green heavy crepe. Uh, this is the German heavy crepe in grass green, but you can really use any kind of heavyweight green crepe as long as it's a medium green to a dark green. Um, then we are going to color that paper with our Design Master color tool sprays. Uh, we'll do a coat of the basil first and then we'll do a coat of the herbal um, to get the right color for our leaves. Then we will be laminating the paper with either the Yes paste or your glue stick, whichever you may have on hand. Oh, and our Eileen's, we need that too. So that is all we need for supplies. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is prep our paper um, so we can get that ready to go. And all we'll have to do after that is cut it out and put it all together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of our green heavy crepe and we're going to have that end up being a 7 inch by 14 inch piece of paper. So 7 inches grain going this way. Okay and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this piece and we're going to stretch it out a bit. I started from the middle and I'm kind of going towards the edges and just kind of holding it with one hand and pulling it with the other to stretch it. And I'm going to go back over to this side and then do the same thing. And we're really, we're not doing a full on stretch all the way out, but we are stretching it enough so we make sure we have a piece that is seven inches tall by 20 inches long. So I'm gonna measure that. And that's about right. So this is my piece that is seven by 20. And it's actually a little bit longer than my 18 inch mat. So that tells me that it's just about the right size. So I'm gonna take this and fold it in half. I'm going to line it up just to make sure I got my measurement right, and it is just at 10 inches, folded in half. So I'm going to take this and make a crease at the fold here so I have a good idea where my center line is. And then I'm actually going to take this outside and spray it. Um, so I'm going to show what that looks like. Um, with some still images here in just a moment so you can see what it's going to look like. First we're going to do a coating of the basil just to kind of give us a darker base color on this paper and then we'll go back over it with the herbal color and that'll give us kind of that blue kind of sagey color that these leaves have. So I will jump to those photos to just show you the process of spraying the paper and then we'll get to the next step. So here's my paper fully sprayed and it is cut to the right size. This is our seven by 20 inch piece. Um, and you can kind of tell 
that the color is a little uneven in spots and I did that on purpose. So I want there to be a little bit of color variation in the leaves so it's not just a flat color. So there's a little bit of that yellow green kind of still showing through. Um, I didn't do a full like solid coat with the basil when I started, um, but I did go over the paper about two times with each color to make sure that I had a decent coating over the majority of the paper. So if you wanna see the difference in the coloration here, so this is the color that we started with, and this is the color that we got after spraying. So um, it's just really interesting how this color tool spray will incredibly change the uh, color of the paper. So what I'm gonna do is take this, fold it in half again, make sure I have my crease one more time. And then I'm going to grab a piece of wax paper to lay down to protect my surface. I'm gonna put that down real fast. Grab my crepe again and lay that down. I'm gonna open this up. So my center fold line is here. So I'm well within the wax paper. And then I'm actually going to use my Yes Paste to laminate this paper. So I'm gonna grab my sponge brush real quick and we will get started on that. All right, so I've got my paste here and it is open. You can kind of see the texture of this is really thick. It's almost like um, like Vaseline or petroleum jelly as far as consistency goes. So don't let that throw you. That's exactly what it's supposed to look like. So I'm gonna take my two inch foam sponge brush here. I'm gonna dip that into my paste, get it good and coated, and then so starting from this center fold line here, I'm going to start applying my paste. And I'm actually gonna do from the center out, just to make sure that I get these edges coated. Because if I start from the edge and go down, sometimes I don't get that edge completely covered. And we're gonna make sure we get a nice even coat of paste here. all the way down, make sure I go over the edge. And we're just gonna keep repeating that all the way down this half of the paper. It's looking a little thin there, so I had to get a little bit more. Okay. So we're just gonna keep on trucking with that all the way down. I know it's, my camera's a little wobbly here. This is a, not the most sturdy table that I'm working on. So you'll have to forgive me for the shaky cam that I've got going here. on going. Um, you can really tell when you have it on uh, in a thick layer because it'll be very shiny when you put it on. Uh, if you don't have this paste to use, you can always use your glue stick. Um, I just find that if you do a larger piece with the glue stick, um, you might have to start folding the paper back over on itself in sections so your glue stick doesn't dry by the time you get to the end of your paper. Uh, the paste gives you a little bit more working time so you don't have to rush to get this all covered. And this does get rather messy and your fingers get all sticky. So just make sure you 
wash your hands really good after this step. Okay, got everything pretty well covered. I'm just gonna get this corner one more time. Okay, so close up my paste here. To make sure I'm not getting it stuck to the wax paper, I'm going to kind of scooch that a little bit over, and then I'm going to fold this, fold this over top, just find my center line again where I had it creased, and stick that down, and then just kind of use my thumbs and my fingers to kind of press that down and make sure it gets really good and stuck together. Um, if you have a brayer, this is a great time to use it because that will make sure that your paper is good and stuck together. Uh, what I'm doing here is that there's a little bit of edge kind of sneaking out over past the top. So I'm gonna line up my edges again here as gently as possible. Scooch that up. Okay. Does not seem to want to move, but that's okay. All right, so I do have a brayer, so I'm gonna show how to do that. And you're just gonna get, apply even pressure to your paper all the way down. And you wanna make sure you're rolling your brayer the same direction as the grain and not against it, because it, that will stretch your paper out. The one plus side to using the paste as opposed to the glue stick or the Aileen's Tacky Glue or any other wet kind of glue is that your paper doesn't stretch out. Uh, it doesn't get wet enough for it to expand in the same way that you would, that you would get with regular glue. So we're going to let this dry for a little bit. Uh, move this that way. So I am going to set this aside for a moment and get things cleaned up. I'm going to get rid of my wax paper and I'm going to wash my brush. Make sure you do this very quickly or else you'll end up with a crusty brush. So don't do that. <laughs> so I'm going to clean up and then we'll get to the next step. Okay, so I do want to take a quick little time out here and while this paper is drying with the lamination, I am going to show you an alternative way to color your green crepe if you do not have the color tool spray. So I've got a piece of my green, grass green crepe, and I have, it is stretched out a little bit. So I'm going to use pan pastel instead. Um, the colors that I would recommend using would be the permanent green shade and then the permanent green tint. Um, I do not have the permanent green shade, but I do have regular permanent green. So just to show for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use those two colors. So I've got my permanent green here and my permanent green tint. And I'm going to grab my blender brush here. And we're going to start with the darker color first, just like we did with the spray. So we take our darker green. And we're just going to lay down a fairly even coat of this pastel. And this is just to slightly shift the color more towards that blue tone. Um, if you have a darker green paper already that you're using, um, that kind of has more of a blue tone to it, you may not have to do this particular step, but this is, this color green is what I have the most of, so that's what I'm using. So I'm going to flip my paper around, kind of get this edge as well. Just make sure 
I've got enough of that darker green laid down just to kind of color or to, to change, just to change that color a little bit. I have just a little bit more right here. Okay, so you can already see there's a decent change in the color from this kind of yellow green to a more blue tone. So I'm going to rub my brush a little bit just to get some of that darker color off. And I'm going to go into my lighter green here and we're going to go over it. And this is very similar to how we changed the color for the sepal in the rose. So just laying down that pastel color to get it to change. Now I will say that if you do use this coloring method, you will definitely need to use a fixative or else you will get pastel all over your fingers as you're working on it and then it will come off the paper and then you kind of wrecked your work. So um, if you do decide to do this method for coloring, make sure you use some sort of fixative, whether that's the Krylon or um, even the Krylon like UV protectant spray uh, should help with the pastel and keep it from coming off onto your fingers like that. So that's just an alternative way to get a similar color. Now it's not exact. Um, it's not the exact same color as what we had with the spray, but it's, it's close enough um, to get what you're looking for. So just keep that in mind. Um, but that is an alternative way to color your paper if you don't have the spray or if you can't have or if you don't have access to the spray, you can use pan pastel instead. All right. This is still a little damp, so I want to give that a little bit more time to dry. Um, so in the meantime, I'm actually going to use uh, a piece of scrap from the last one that I made, just so we can kind of keep on trucking with this. So I'm gonna set this aside again so it can dry a little bit more, and we'll get started with this piece. So I'm going to start with the smallest leaf here. So it's this little guy right here. Uh, this is from the pattern that I'll have attached in the description. Uh, this is going to be um, in PDF and SVG form. So if you have a Cricut and you want to cut them out with the Cricut and use this as your template to hand cut your leaves, you can definitely do that. Um, I'm also going to be using this same file for the cardstock version of this eucalyptus that I'll be doing later on in the month. So with this pattern, um, I put numbers down, and this is just to remind me how many of each leaf size I need to cut out. So for the very first one, I'm only cutting two leaves. So it'll be two leaves, and that'll just be the ones on the very end here. So those will be the only ones of that size. To get that started, I'm actually going to use a smaller scrap if I can find it. Okay, so for this one I'm actually going to use a smaller piece of scrap. So I'm going to, since I only need two of these, I'm going to cut a piece that is long enough to do two leaves and still tall enough for both of them. Actually, a little bit longer. There we go. And just cut that right off. And now I've got plenty of room here to do two leaves, so I'm going to cut this. 
into a rectangle and then just make sure this is the same size. I did cut that a little long, but that's okay. Just cut that off. Okay, so I'm not going to cut my shape just yet. It's just to get me the right size of paper. So I'm going to move my template out of the way. And so for these two, I'm going to cut at a diagonal, just like that. Grab my pieces that flew away. And then we're going to do our mitered leaves like we usually do. I'm just kind of readjusting the crepe so I get a straight line again. So we've got our little V here and on this one as well. All right, so we've got our two leaves for that. And I'm actually going to cut out all of the mitered leaf shapes that I need first, and then we'll get into cutting the shapes out and assembling them. So for this piece, we need four. So I think I can pretty much keep the same, just about the same height that I had before. And I'm actually going to cut, use my bigger scissors and I'm gonna cut straight across. And this may be too much paper, but that's okay. A little tail off there. Okay, so we've got one, and I'm just lining these pieces up to get them all the same size. Two, and I did not cut that very straight, so I'll have to go back and fix that a little bit. Three. And four. I'm just stacking those up so they're all about the same height on one side and then I'm just going to down so they're all the same size. All right, so I've got four pieces here. It's easier for me to cut two at a time with this angle, so I'm going to line that up and snip. Same thing with this one. So that. And line them up. All right, so that's four for this size. And then we're just going to keep going. I'm going to even this piece out just a little bit because it's bugging me. Okay. All right. So we're going to do four of this piece, or this size rather. So again, just holding the template over the paper just to make sure that you have enough space around it and you've got a big enough piece. One 
more. got four pieces for that size. This is actually a little bit tall for this one, so I may trim that down some actually. through all four of these, but if it's easier for you to not do that, that's fine. All right, so I've got my four pieces. I'm going to grab two of them, do my angle cut. bigger pieces so we are going to start using this other piece of scrap and I need four of these so one two three four it's probably about enough space so I'm gonna mark to about here I think should be a long enough piece to get my four. So I'm going to cut right here. And again, that's a little bit too tall for what I need, and that's okay. going to do with this piece here, um, which I should have done before we laminated that paper, but um, we should have had a piece that we cut off that was about a quarter inch tall, um, and then the length of the paper. Um, cut that off to have that be stem wrap, but since I have this piece uh, and it's already glued together and dried, what I can do to separate that out is just stretch this all the way. should, for the most part, separate from itself. And now I've got this long piece that I can use for a stem wrap. So I'm going to set that aside for the assembly part. And we'll keep cutting out our leaves.
Okay, so before we get to gluing these together and wiring some of these leaves, um, I'm actually going to do an extra little bit of cutting um, that'll make things a little bit easier once we get the wire put on. So what I'm going to do is for these last three sizes, I'm actually going to go back, line these up again with each other, and take my pattern piece and line it up so it is lined up with the center. Just like that. So the widest part is lined up with the widest part of the square, the mitered square. And then what I'm going to do, is once I have that lined up, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm actually just going to cut straight across the bottom here. And what that's going to do is make things a little bit easier for me to cut out the leaf shape once I have my wire put in. So for these three sizes is where we're going to start wiring our leaves. So for these four sizes here, we're just going to do a straight line of glue and then sandwich it on top of each other. So we're not doing any wires here. But I am going to, now that I have this one set and figured out exactly where my cut needs to be, I'm going to do that for the rest of these pieces. So line these up. And then using this piece, this top piece as my guide, I'm going to cut off the tips of those triangles. And I'm just going to do that all the way down my row here, or my column.
Okay, so we've got all of our shapes cut out and ready to be mitered with or without wire. And we'll get started on that in part number two. Thanks for joining me.